How's it going? I'm your host, Malachi Grubb, CEO of Elite Automation. Today, we're going to talk about a super hot topic, and that is going to be AI, robotics, and how they're going to play a role in manufacturing and automation. I've done some other videos like this, so stay tuned and then subscribe if you're interested in this topic. However, I will say this. I think AI, robotics, and humanoid robotics is going to be one of the primary disruptors in our industry. So I have two big reasons for this, why I think this is gonna be the case. One is this gives us the ability to deploy robotics to do just about anything a human can do. There are some challenges still there. One of them being that dexterity, that humans just have amazing dexterity, the ability to fill things with their hands and be able to manipulate things with their hands. If we can get robotics to be able to do the same thing that a human can do with their fingers with a humanoid style robot, it doesn't have to be humanoid style robot. It just has to have that same dexterity. But the other thing is too, is like being a humanoid style robot. Generally, if a human can survive in that same environment, then, or should I say work in that same environment and necessarily survive, but just being able to operate and, and work in that type of environment, then a humanoid robot should also be able to work in that type of environment. So it becomes a direct replacement for a human. Whereas like, you know, a lot of equipment, a lot of machinery, like even that we do as a company, but a lot of automation companies do, is not necessarily a direct replacement of hu like of humans because maybe like cycle time is, you know, super high, or maybe like what we're, the system that we're, we're replacing is uh, replacing something that has like super terrible ergonomic impact on a body you know maybe they get like arthritis within a couple of years or something like that i mean here like you know, say you know everybody at toyota that's an operator has like an x in their hand or whatever from the from the surgeries they used to get from like carpal tunnel or whatever it is so it's like a super serious thing going back to that like you know the, the type of equipment we're putting out sometimes are producing like thousands of parts maybe a minute that's something a human can't do by their hand right so the systems or the operations that are being automated are different. They're being automated for a different use case. Maybe it does eliminate some some employees or some operators or whatever for at least that working area, but it doesn't all the time one for one replace a job. I'll give a, a perfect exact example that we, we built a system and the system had to do the job of four people and only be operated by one. That system has its own criteria. I'll say when it has its own criteria, meaning even budgeting has to be in a certain way. It's cycle time has to be in a certain way, right? Because now we have to build this machine to be able to accommodate four workers labor, you know, so that way the system can become feasible. If the system can't do that, then the system is not feasible and there's not an ROI for the system, meaning why would somebody automate the process? They would just keep manual labor there doing the process. And like, also like, how does that work out? I'll just get some random numbers. Uh, but like, let's say for instance, the system ends up, it's gonna cost a million dollars to build it, right? And, and a system System couldn't be built for any less to do that same type of operation even if it was only outputting what one operator could output just all the mechanics and all the programming that's necessary to make that system feasible it has to be able to produce the number of four people the customer has to have the the, the product demand to, to be outputting four people's labor worth of work to then you know invest into the, into that system because if not let's say for instance you know if they don't have that output and they run the machine only 50 percent of the time that also means it's not feasible because they don't have an roi so now this brings you back to the humanoid robot it's a one-to-one -one replacement that's where the big deal is is that you can literally take that operator say get out of here put the humanoid robot in place now that's going to be the biggest disruptor and we're going to have to figure out some society wise you know we our slogan is freeing humans one robot at a time one of my goals for our company and just myself in general is to reach a point of, of wealth and social influence that I can truly make an impact in things such as like how our society operates. We have to change the way that we're going to operate because at some point in time, there's not going to really be jobs. There's not going to be manufacturing jobs for operators. Like it's just, this is not going to be a thing. It's 101% not going to be a thing. It might take 50 years, right? It may not be right around the corner, but it's coming. It, it'll definitely be here. And it'll happen slowly as the technology advances and as it gets better over time. As I mentioned in the last video that if AI has a switch where it goes from being like these pieced together pieces of AI to like an actual sentient being where it can like actually like almost have like emotion and have the ability to learn anything and everything and, and learn the same way a human can learn. If 
a switch get, happens like that, then it will become very, very disruptive, very immediate, and especially with the humanoid robots. Cause like right now I'll tell you what, what humanoid robots are gonna look like. They're gonna have some, they're definitely gonna have mechanical limitations. They're gonna be clunky. They're not gonna move around very smoothly. And you can see this with all these different demonstrations of, you know, the different robots like Optimus from Tesla, but also outside of them just being like mechanically clunky, they're also not gonna be as intelligent as they're made out to be, right? Whenever, you know, you see this robot that's picking color and it learned how to pick it itself and the human just taught it how to do it. I mean, that's a programmer. <laughs> that's what a programmer does. Whenever we teach, whenever we're teaching a robot, we're teaching that robot what to do by just moving it to a place, teaching it here, teaching it there. That gap will have to be bridged. So there's two different gaps there where one is like the intelligence of the uh, robot and it, and it actually have an AI that is, can teach itself versus having a humanoid robot that still needs a lot of teaching. So honestly, one thing that I anticipate that we'll be we'll be deploying humanoid robots at some point, right? Tesla or before their soft their system and their before their AI is ready, they're gonna need companies like us to actually program the humanoid robots or at least do some interfacing. Interfacing meaning how does the robot know when a machine is done? You know, I don't think it's gonna have that intelligence for some period of time. I don't think it's gonna be reliable enough. You know, I think the robot will get confused used and like try to walk off somewhere else if we if we let it be too free at first so you're going to kind of constrain and say hey this is your area to work in i want you to work in this area have the plc talk to it it's gonna have to say you know machine done cycle complete and that signal is gonna have to be passed to it via like wi-fi or something like that and some communication protocol like modbus tcp or even an ip for wi-fi something along those lines right and that layer of integration is still going to be needed and you know it's gonna be companies like us that 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 are doing that at first until it becomes intelligent enough especially these companies where they're really trying to generate generate revenue fairly quickly but some of these companies like you know like boston dynamics where i don't even know if they generate revenue i don't pay much attention to them i'm not a huge fan of boston dynamics because one i don't i just don't like r d companies only where they don't generate revenue and then the other thing to that is too they're also like pretty like military based and i'm like not really a huge fan of like robotics and military but the other thing is too is like whenever you're whatever you're trying to generate revenue off product they're going to deploy it to the market before it's ready like we did amr deployments or do amr deployments and you know we deployed some of the first amrs to the market and they weren't good they were like you know a cool new piece of technology that looked good in the marketing videos but in real life like it didn't perform very well and they've gotten a lot better over time but they've been sold like of this you know, amazing product for, you know, 10 years now. And, you know, they weren't that good of a product then. So it was like more of a marketing thing, selling this product that's that, not that good. And so we're gonna see the exact same things, I think, with all the humanoid robots. You know, the only thing I could say where like the humanoid robot will just like come out just like amazing is with some of the AI stuff. And I think there needs to be some more partnerships really for that to work. So, you know, I kind of take this back going into like the integration side of things where, you know, these, these robots are not gonna be as capable at first and you're gonna have to do more things to teach them how they need to work. I think there's still gonna be a huge use case for them. They're gonna sell tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of units way before the AI side of things are ready. I mean, again, the AI thing is a switch. It could happen tomorrow or, or it might take 10, 20 more years for somebody to actually figure out how to teach something that, or how to you know write code that can teach itself. By the way, my theory on this is some type of code that is so utterly basic is gonna be the code that, that figures it out. It's be, I think whoever figures it out is gonna like write this very simplistic code and it's just gonna work. Like some type of thing where like you literally just teach it like five beliefs and then somehow just like give it the ability to learn and it and it basically kind of like that spark of life and then just kind of having some of the inherent instincts teach it some instincts and then I think it will come alive and be able to teach itself. I think you have to have that very root nothingness for something to have the true ability to fully fully learn. At least you become like a sentient being. Could be wrong. That's just my theory. So again, we're gonna have to integrate these robots and, and we're gonna have to teach them and show them how to do their jobs. And I think that's gonna happen for some long period of time before before we see AI really step in and be able to teach the robot itself. You're also gonna have the different robots that are gonna perform and sell into different markets better than others. Maybe it's somebody just wants the, the cost, right? They want the cheapest one available that still gets the job done. Okay, they're gonna buy XYZ robot. Then you're gonna have ones that are, you know, hey, we, we need to do like a little bit more complicated tasks or hey, I wanted to do this task here. 
then I want to do that task there. I'll give you a perfect example. They need to develop a robot that doesn't even have hands at all. It has like nubs. Basically, like if, if you just cut your hand off, that's the type of hands that it has. Obviously, that has no dexterity at all. So it's not going to do anything with like hand movement and hand motion and, and things along those lines. Whereas like, say for instance, like Tesla's Optimus robot, it is going to be, it's going to have much higher dexterity and the ability to like use its fingers and stuff like that. So it's going to sell to a market. Also, one thing I'd like to point out that I think a lot of robot makers are, are missing out or at least not pointing out. Maybe they just don't care because they're not trying to sell to a company like ours. But I don't see a lot of companies having a like face plate on them. And when I say face plate, like for like a six axis robot, you would have like what's called a face plate, which that face plate is where you would mount any custom tooling. I see a use case where like if you just could just put like a custom hand on it, like even if it just had no mechanical motion really at all, or, or maybe you just wanted to add like one little gripper to it, you could design your own like custom gripper that would work better than what they have on it right now. And maybe, you know, maybe they're doing custom ones for their customer or something like that. I don't know, but you know, giving people, you know, that tool is very useful because you can make the process much more, I'll say much more repeatable. it would be a much better process by just having like the custom tooling versus just like using two nubs and like trying to grab something like this. It just doesn't seem to be like the best solution. So I'd like to see some more things like that where you can still design your own custom toolings because that might be the best way to to pick things up versus even the human hand, right? The human hand's great for like dexterity and being able to do many different things. But like if you're always going to use the, the product in one, one use case, then you might as well have the machine or robot adapted as much as you possibly can. All right, so this was another long-winded video here. Hopefully, I'll stuck around to the end. Hit the subscribe button if you like content like this, or if you'd like for me to talk about any particular topic uh, regarding this. Uh, I, I go deep a lot of times, so sometimes I kind of miss out on the high-level overviews that I'm trying to do. But yeah, if there's any particular things that you'd like to know about, put it in the comments below. Subscribe for more content like this, and we'll catch you on the next one.